Tom uh, Nolasco, our uh, legal advisor, was uh, not able to be with us this morning. He, he called the meeting to order. Uh, uh, this meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. So uh, I'll just take a, a roll of the people who are here. I'm Mark Gorman, uh, executive VP at the uh, NACP. Uh, uh, do we have Ashley? I oh, know I'm looking for wrong. <laughs> okay. Wrong subcommittee. Okay. So I think we have. Yeah. Uh, All right. So. Yeah. Uh, among the among the NACB uh, team here, uh, Danica. Here. Rosen. Uh, among the uh, the advisory committee members, Tim Wessel. Here. Uh, Dr. Levine. And uh, there he is, and uh, Ingrid Jones. I'm here. Okay, good. And uh, at CCB, uh, we have uh, Julie, Julie Hilbert. Yep. Uh, Bryn here. Bryn is not in here at the, at the moment. Okay. She may come along. And, and, and Nellie Marble, yep. have you seen her? Yep. And uh, also joining us, uh, Gina Cranwinkle from NACB. Excellent. Good. Uh, the, you know, we got through uh, a good bit of the material on uh, last week uh, on uh, advertising and, and marketing. And I think our consensus was to come back today and start going through items where we feel like you know, we could probably make a, uh, some recommendations without having to um, study it too hard, things, things that we're already very familiar with. Warning labels kind of uh, um, is, is one thing that comes to mind. Um, is anybody, is everybody okay with that approach? Okay. So, uh, Mark, if, yeah, if I may. Yeah, sure. No, no problem. Did everyone receive Friday the, um, and I we apologize it was Friday afternoon, but the um, examples of some different types of warning labels and um, universal symbols for cannabis. If you did not, I, I, I mean, I'm more than happy to bring them up on the screen. Um, but when we, we also sent some draft meeting minutes, so um, I don't know if anybody had a chance to review those, but um, we, we'd like to uh, at least by Thursday get those um, approved. So if anybody could take a look and make sure that we accurately uh, reflected what we said um, on the call as well. So um, what Mark and I talked about this week as well, something that we'd like to do with each of you is to kind of take a step in the direction of what do you want if you were the person that was, you know, walking into a cannabis store to purchase, what do you want your consumer to know? So we've had the opportunity to peruse, um, you know, what you have, some of the different elements online, but also um, what's the most important thing to the consumer. There are several things that, that come to mind, as Mark mentioned, um, warning labels, which there's a plethora of them out there and all different kinds, but also, you know, what else would you want the consumer to know? Now, what we don't want to do is put anyone in a position of burden, but at the same time, because this is your state and how you're rolling it out, um, especially, you know, at the local level, do we do you want to start with even just the basics of impairment or the the basics of some other items like that that tells the consumer you know what it is that they are purchasing and um what that means so that was our our initial discussion thought and then the second would be to talk about those first disclaimers and what they look like and then of course the warning labels we um we could bombard everybody with tons of different warning labels out there. There, there do seem to be some very universal ones, and I am more than happy 
to put up those up just so everybody can take a look in case you did not have the opportunity to do so um, earlier. So if, does that sound like a good approach? Would you like to see them? All right, fantastic. Let me do that. Okay, so Mark prepped um, a good chunk of these to show the seven different, just seven universal style symbols for cannabis that um, I will say I've seen them on everything from um, how someone would take their cannabis home, just, you know, the actual cannabis that they were going to consume, down to um, ointments and uh, creams and things that do contain THC. Um, so these universal symbols, what I've seen in different um, dispensaries, retail outlets, whatever you choose to call them, are things like this on every single product so that you know what is inside is cannabis. So that is very much so um, more than likely a given if you'd like to, to have that as well, which really needs to be there. So um, does anyone have any thoughts on that or you know, in agreement that you would want it at least marked as such, no matter what the package is. Okay, so great. So looking at these, um, here's the, the other initiative to consider, and Mark, please step in, and anyone please step in. The other initiative to consider here would be if you wanted them, you know, from a color perspective, you know, green, of course, is cannabis and universal, but red often, in, you know, shows caution, or at least it alerts you to what is inside. Um, so there's also an element of balance that may come in with um, the packaging uh, for, for any person in a dispensary or whatever product they would want to do. Um, so Ingrid, I'll, I'll start with you. Do you have any thoughts on this, um, especially coming from your background um, as for marking these, uh, marking anything that had it? Um, you know, just taking these all in, I, I definitely, as you mentioned before, I'm in full agreement of marking these. I, the Massachusetts and Maine one with the red triangle seems appropriate um, okay. to me. I mean, I, I'm sort of taking them all in. The exclamation point. That's fine. Yeah. So very clear yeah. Yeah, and also yeah. provides some, some yeah. clarity across state lines so. mm -hmm. yeah. well, I think which there's some benefit. absolutely not exactly a work of yeah. art but some, <laughs> of them, some of them no, actually you're not. some of them actually look like warning signs others to me don't even look like warning there's almost an invitation um, yeah, Michigan and Washington you know okay so Washington has the 21 on there but I, I do agree. There is, there is an element of what I'll call marketing design in a couple of these, which may not be the direction that you would want to go. Um, but I, I'm always in agreement with red as a marketer as something that stands out. It's something that you can see typically no matter what color a package is. If something were black, you could do what's known as a white knockout, which is where, you know, it's bright and white on a black package and you could see it. So there would also be opportunity, um, you know, if necessary to give a couple of variations of color, depending upon the package color, but you would limit it and say it can be, you know, if your package is black, it has to be, you know, white, red and black or, or however we choose to do it but it definitely um, lets you know. And then, you know, I'd love to know everybody's thoughts on adding the contained THC element to it. Or do you believe the cannabis leaf is enough? Yeah, that, um, if you don't mind, I'll just jump in. Uh, I was, Go right ahead. I was gonna say there seems to be disagreement among states whether THC, THC should be included or if the leaf should be included. Um, it occurred to me that there's only one that I'm seeing on this, these examples, um, Massachusetts and Maine, which combined saying THC and the leaf. Uh, I think 
considering trying to do both similar to Massachusetts and Maine might be a good thing because some people mm -hmm. understand what THC is and some people do not. Um, okay. And if you don't understand THC, you're probably going to understand that leaf. It's a pretty universal, although it's amusing when you look at the leaves, they're not even all in agreement of what these leaves look like. <laughs> to my yeah. eye, to my eye, the Michigan is more true to what these leaves look like. But uh, um, so yeah, yeah so, like maple yeah. leaves, Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. Something you want to be aware of in Vermont. Um, but uh, to me, I, I lean more towards the, the style of uh, Massachusetts and Maine because of the triangle and because of the red. Um, doesn't mean you couldn't make the leaf green. Nobody's really thought that. Um, but I think I would I would urge against something like Michigan, which really just looks kind of uh, inviting to me. If if the idea yeah. is to try to to warn people, because later we'll be discussing warning labels, which I understand yep. be different. But uh, I think you should have that suggestion of, hey, look out. Um, okay. And if I could, if yeah, I could yeah. offer it up, I know we're not making a final decision, but in the health department, we have people skilled in public health communications and marketing, and um, I certainly want them to be able to weigh in as we get okay. to the point, um, just because I think that would inform us in a good way. I, I think that's an excellent um, consideration, absolutely. So I do have a question. Dr. Levine, for you, um, would contain would contain THC from a medical perspective be something that you um, would definitely want on there? in addition to the leaf. It sounds like we're all gearing that way towards Massachusetts and Maine, which, you know, is a huge help. But um, I'd love, you know, your thoughts as a medical professional, too. Yeah, I think I think that would be reasonable. Um, okay. I'm just, I'm just not sure where to draw the line. You know, I mentioned CBD, I, you know, CBD last time, and it's mm -hmm. CBD is running around the country saying, I'm safe, take me in, right. uh, and, and I don't know that we actually know that uh, to the degree necessary, uh, so you know, how many ingredients would we list after a while, but I, I'm kind of with you. I mean, the Surgeon General's thing on cigarettes identifies that there's harmful substances in there, um, mm -hmm. so that, that theme okay. 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 Well, I do believe that, um, you know, what we we also could do is take a look at, you know, how it would look on a package of something, if, if anybody would be interested in that, um, because we can pull some additional packages from um, some of these products. So I think that is um, definitely worth it. So I think we're all um, in agreement that, you know, even just starting with the very basic of that warning symbol, um, and then what we would more than likely do is want to make recommendations on how small it could be, that it can't be like this, or, you know, we could give a dimension size. But one of the things, I don't know if you had the opportunity to open up this particular, um, um, this particular file when I sent it, I was, I was surprised, I didn't know this, that you can buy warning labels on Amazon for GHC and Walmart of all places. The warning labels I put in here you could actually get one of them from, from Amazon and one of them from Walmart, which I thought was very interesting. But it, it, it does give um, you know, some, some different perspective on that, and these are also you know, go to tamper proof. So um, if we start with a universal symbol, especially if we consider things like creams, like I said, ointments, you know, things that might come in a different style package that may not necessarily be consumed and then tossed, then it, it might be something that sits in someone's, you know, um, medicine cabinet, then it's worth that consideration um, to definitely have that small symbol at a minimum. Because if you throw the package away, then at least it would also be on, say, a jar. That's where I was going with that, so I apologize that I didn't maybe get to it quick enough. Mark, do you have any thoughts on this as well? Are you? Uh, no, I think these are, uh, are really for packages, right? Yep. Uh, 
and can other other containers and yep. so it's not really advertising but uh, all right is there a need to have a, a symbol on um, you know say a magazine ad or a or a uh, you know a social media ad there, there, there would be disclaimers at least uh, warnings you know possibly that's a good point um, and I think that comes down to where um, it, it comes down to that that line again what becomes too much you know I'll, I'll, I'll swap over to California real fast um, and then we'll come back to this like the California one says um, government warning this package contains cannabis a schedule one controlled substance you know they keep out of reach of children but that is actually one that you can do like a tamper proof over it as well but once it's ripped it's, it's gone you know or it could be it could be gone um so that's an example then back to oklahoma contains thc not safe for kids or pets that was interesting on the pet side good to know and then um california this is their warning label for use by adults 21 and older if you've got to reach children it's illegal to drive a motor vehicle while under the influence of marijuana so they really run the gamut but what's interesting um, for these and I'll put them all in a word document these various ones typed up because ideally it would be great if you guys could take a look at them between say now and Thursday and think about what you think is the most important thing for for those in Vermont um, and also to warn, you know, to warn the general public and also the not safe for children aspect. So, um, anybody have any additional thoughts on this piece? Right now? No? Okay. So, um, so that, Mark does raise a very good point, and that is um, how this will look in say social media or any other type of ad so we will get some additional ad examples um, that we can also share I'm, I'm taking some notes while we're doing this as well okay um i just want to add i just wanted to add i like the not safe for kids aspect of okay yeah. no okay great So there's a balance in my whole career i will tell you I've, I've dealt with so many you know legal clearances as a marketer before we could do anything and so the running joke always with my attorneys was i would say stop please stop being business prevention department but there's a fine balance as well um you know for sales but the sales are going to happen anyway i um, mean people are going it, it's kind of like buying alcohol they're they're going to go in and buy it that sale is going to happen so I think that's something also to consider. Um, so when we make our recommendations, you know, Mark is, is going to err to the side of, of, of alcohol and what they did. At, um, you know, Mark, anything that you want to add to that as far as uh, cannabis being even a commodity and how that would work once these um, stores start opening and, and your thoughts on that? I, you know, one thing that well, strikes me that that's uh, this California warning label we're looking at. So it looks like the old warning label on the side of a package of cigarettes that nobody yeah. ever looked at or read or paid any attention to. And, uh, you know, I guess before we're all done with this, we probably ought to make sure that we're satisfied that there's what we're proposing is uh, could be at least somewhat impactful. Mm -hmm. that is the other thing people are immune to them they often can be immune to to what they see so the ability to be distinctive i think is important i think it also um, if you don't mind uh, it, it kind of speaks nope. to um what are, what are we going to require for uh sizing and number yes. of warnings because you know the the example you showed before the California label um, is sort of a decision to 
lump everything with a lot of words into one little area. Obviously that was an Amazon example, so might not necessarily be, but they, it looks like they're checking the boxes on whatever law was passed and they have to say yep. all of that. Um, I think it, you know, it, it, the context, when you send out the word doc, the context of whether or not there, there has to be a universal symbol and then there has to be one or two warning labels, you know, that those parameters kind of affect how I feel about how it should be designed too. But okay. It was a little bit of a, not sure which, which decision comes first. So I, yeah, these, oh, these things, I'm thinking back to the tobacco warnings, have evolved over time, you know, they've been on, on tobacco for since the 60s maybe. And um, I think they've gotten to the point now where there's a very clear warning, but there's a, a selection of about a dozen of them that, uh, that they, they should rotate, you know, throughout the year on, on your packages. Um, we can take a look at, at that mm -hmm. too. So I think, it, you know, at a minimum, the interesting thing too, if you look with California, not only do they have the words, they have the, the warning symbol with the words. So that would also be another um, opportunity there. So what we will do is supply, you know, even down to Massachusetts, um, one of the documents, I mean, in the reference materials, there is um, a summation of what Massachusetts is also now requiring just a general disclaimer. Where they do offer, which I actually like, they offer the ability for, um, they offer the ability for the advertiser to select from state approved things depending upon, you know, what it is they're doing and what might be appropriate. So they have a basic and then you have to pick two, which is an interesting approach, but also um, maybe appropriate for whatever the medium is of what you know they're out there doing so we'll put so that is one thing we'll definitely put out there um are the symbol piece which i can do a quick mock-up of that um and also um like i said we'll we'll give some different languages that you all could play around with and see what me the what might be the right thing there, and then also going back to the law and what the law you know wants to ensure that we say. So we can totally do that. Um, so for the purposes of what we're talking about, I think everyone here is in agreement. We definitely want a universal symbol at a you know to start, and then also that basic warning. And, and I don't mean to trivialize the warning, please don't take it that way. It's really just the starting point. And then also um, any other type of disclaimers, which does come down to um, looking at different elements and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to another screen and pull something up and uh, give me one moment. So I sent this over as well, um, but I'll, I'll also send it where they, you know, Massachusetts' approach is age and then what, what's often known as exhaustive warnings and then discretion of advertising. And so they do the entire age restriction element and they, like Vermont, are 85% need to be 21 or older. Um, you know, no mascots, no cartoons, things of that nature. And um, it does give something additional to react to. It is, um, I think it's one of the last um, links that I put there. And so all the links that I'm giving, and I know sometimes work computers can be a little tricky. I can also um, PDF this if that would help. And then you could just read this summation. And again, taking notes. So what would be additionally helpful for you as we're, as for the three of you as we're looking into, you know, starting these basic shapes 
for it, um, the state. Do you want to, would you like to see, you know, more advertising, um, actual examples? We'll see, you know, where we can pull and see what others are doing in their states, and then that will give you something to react to in that element. Um, yeah. And then I think the, the ideal thing would be for the three of you is, again, what do you want someone in Vermont to know? Even if people may be, um, maybe, how, how did I say it earlier, they may be a little bit immune to some of the things they see. You know, the reality is they're not going to be in the beginning because they haven't really seen these in your own state. And so there's also, you know, that balance there. So it's the opportunity to let them know out of the gate what you want them to know. Yeah, and I might add that uh, it, it probably would be super helpful to actually see an example or two if we can gather some, there might even be somebody on YouTube who's already done this, but I would love to see how these symbols, warning labels, etc., actually appear on products. Like okay. what decisions have been made, as I said before, about the number of them, whether they're on one side out of six, I'm assuming, you know, it depends on what kind of package we're talking about, but is, right. it, on egg, is it on front and back, that kind of, um, yep. to not reinvent the wheel, just see what of course. states, especially like I'm most interested in what Massachusetts is doing because I'm always, okay. always thinking like the Northeast states should kind of look similar, seems like it would make sense, okay. rather than, okay. but, um, so I, I would love to see, and I can do some research myself, maybe I'll be able to find something, share it with the group, um, but there's so many uh, examples of videos just floating around YouTube, I thought maybe somebody's actually looking at packaging and showing what the labeling is like. Absolutely. So I, um, I just pulled up, which I know billboards are not allowed, but that was the first thing that popped up for me. I know billboards aren't allowed in, in Vermont. And Dr. Levine, I see something exactly like you were saying. It, the, the, uh, the billboard literally says, why wait for better health? So um, we'll put some of those together uh, well, as well. Take that. <laughs> Say again. Yeah. What state was that? I'm curious. I hold on a real uh, Massachusetts actually. First billboard for a marijuana dispensary debut. Let me see if I can share this side of my screen. Mm -hmm. The difference between Massachusetts and uh, Vermont, right? Billboards. Uh, well, well, any state in Vermont. Any yeah. state around us. <laughs> yeah. So the other interesting element I will add, which goes back to um, another. And I, this is a uh, new, very important news, marijuana advertising. That they had something like states that legalized marijuana had 25% fewer opioid-related deaths. Recreational cannabis available. So this is a directional sign and has absolutely no warnings on it. None. For adults 21 plus, that's it. And so the, the labeling we're looking at now is... Mm -hmm. Any product, because I know we have a separate session on edibles, um, but is it any product, whether it be the leaf, whether it be um, an edible, whether it be a, uh, another form of sale, you know? Yeah, it, it would be any product, but that doesn't mean it would be the only thing necessarily. Like yeah. you said, when it comes to edible, um, and, and the tamper proof is going to be important as well. That tamper proof type label um, yeah. in there, but no, it would not. It, it, not at all. I, I think when you get to those particular elements, then you know we enter another another piece of this. Mark, were you going to say something? Yeah, um, you know we have. I think it's great. I mean, and the easiest, the easiest thing to do is, I guess, to agree on something that shows that declares the presence of. THC. Um, yep. Should we? Should there be a different kind of warning or a more extensive warning for uh, concentrates? Um, you know, contains. I mean, even even adults need <laughs> need those kind of warnings. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
some of those concentrates are, well, they're allowed up to up to 60 in, uh, in Vermont, 60% uh, THC. Uh, I think we probably ought to take a look at, at uh, yeah. other examples of that as well. Okay, got it. So, and, um, and C CBD, I, I guess, is not uh, not really labeled. Some of it um, is, but some of it's not. Um, that is definitely something uh, I uh, may also um, have a conversation with Ashley Reynolds, who is uh, part of the advisory committee as well on uh, her CBD labeling, because she owns a CBD um, store or Elmer Mountain Therapeutics in Vermont. Um, and it might also be interesting to get her perspective as someone who could potentially, you know, be in retail in that element as well. So the, uh, the, the last thing I'll add to this um, when we can for us to continue to start, continue this discussion is font size. Um, I know that that is immensely important across multiple industries that people actually be able to read it if I, 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 and see it. And so um, there would need to be a minimum font size because I, I don't know about anybody on this call, but reading a credit card agreement or anything you get from your bank or even an, an auto loan sale or anything along those lines, it's, it's virtually impossible to read. So um, again, we wanna err on not being onerous, but also on the side of can people read it? And so from my perspective and in my former lines of business, we never went below um, eight points on a font size. And so I think that that is something also to take into consideration is, is what those font sizes look like. So I will see about getting um, some clarity on that because I do know, uh, having been in a, a dispensary in Michigan, um, interestingly enough, sorry, family lives there, but having been in a dispensary in Michigan, um, you know, the, the, the product would go into like a, um, a pill bottle type thing and then had the tamper proof label on top. And that was really all you got. So that's something also to consider is not everything will be distinctly packaged. Um, uh, go ahead, Marcy. I think we should, um, take a, a moment here to go back and make sure that everybody is on board with uh, what the law stipulates for uh, advertising um, and uh, see if there are any other, you know, wrinkles you'd like to add. Uh, but, you know, it's basic stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. It says cannabis establishment advertisement shall not contain any statement or illustration that is deceptive, false, or misleading. I don't get the sense that anybody disagrees with that. Doesn't prom it doesn't promote overconsumption. Uh, represents that the use of cannabis has curative effects. I'm just basically reading what the provisions of the law say. Uh, you cannot offer a prize or, or an award or an inducement for purchasing cannabis except you are allowed discounts. Um, you can't offer free samples. Uh, you can't depict a person younger than 21 years of age consuming cannabis. Um, you cannot uh, do anything that's uh, actually designed or has the effect of being particularly appealing to people under 21. As one one thing I wanted to. Uh, point out uh, is that advertisements can't be run in, uh, on media uh, that uh, have an audience of, of uh, more than 15% under the age of 21. Um, it's stiffer than stiffer than uh, most states, stiffer than most products, as a matter of fact. Um, generally, alcohol producers are uh, they're at the uh, demographic of uh, you know, 70% uh, under the age of, uh, I mean, it has to be under 70% have to be 
over the age of 21. Um, now there are, Danica uh, has more experience with advertising uh, than I do, certainly. And, um, uh, you know, has, has the view that uh, there's, uh, that, that if you're, you're creating a 15% threshold for under 21, you're really, uh, uh, really limiting the, uh, you know, the ability to show your ads on, uh, on a lot of media. And we'll try to get some examples, specifically examples, mm -hmm. um, but uh, of, of what kind of, you know, what's Facebook? Is it 70%? Is it 85%? Uh, what's, uh, you know, what's late night TV versus uh, college football? Uh, and um, and so so that you have an idea of what the limitation is. But uh, uh, so the one thing that I wanted to point out that really relates to the uh, health warnings is that all advertisements, all advertisements shall contain health warnings adopted mm -hmm. by rule by the board in consultation with the Department of Health. So. I think most of the things that we've talked about so far are, are pretty routine in terms of uh, responsible advertisements. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but we're going to have to devise something that is a warning that uh, appropriate for, a, for an ad in a magazine or, or online or wherever else people are going to be advertising. Which I think brings back the important point of a universal symbol, a general um, disclaimer. And again, I'll, I'll give you several examples. And then also, um, how, how, how deep you want to go in terms of what's there, like, like we, Mark was mentioning with the concentrates and also, you know, the no health claims. And that may end up being even more important in the medicinal element um, that, that's put out there. So I think that, um, I think if we could get these you know, a symbol or something similar, you know, for you as a mock-up. And then Dr. Levine, if you'd like to share with your um, marketing folks and see their thoughts on it. And then also some examples um, for everybody, like we just talked about. And then maybe by Thursday, if we put all this together, then we could get some general draft language that the three of you, um, may agree upon for again for just some of these general starting points uh, it doesn't mean there may not be more of course depending upon what type of product that it is and um and then some general guidelines put together and i like the fact i'm going to focus more on the northeast corridor i mean california has a good they've done a good job but california you know they're they put warning labels on everything I mean, you walk into a room and there's a warning label, and that's no joke. Uh, that was the way it was in a hotel. Um, but it, it, um, again, I would, I would love to know, you know, Tim, even from your perspective in business, is how much, um, how much do you want to see, you know, for the, for those people? And, and I mean, everyone's valid, but you're bringing a different perspective um, as well. Um, to, to the thoughts because you aren't in law enforcement and you're not a doctor. So you bring a, a different um, side to this. Or, or, and I think that that's, as a business person, you know, that, that's another thing I, I would like to take into consideration here. Everybody's thoughts on not being overly onerous, but at the same time stating what you need to state. Yeah. So right. I welcome I'm, also, I'm here more in my capacity as an elected official than Gotcha. Okay. Even better. I don't deal with labeling in my business. It's service-based. Um, but yeah, I did, I did want to just throw out that um, the the question of um, percentage, um, mm -hmm. you know, the question of um, what's the word I'm searching for? Um, uh, the the THC content equals what? I've lost my yeah, okay. um, strength of concentrate or whatever. Uh -huh. um, you know, that's the question if if, the, if that should be something that people, dosage, yeah, exactly, thank you. Um, if that should be something that can be clearly um, 
played out with three levels of ghost or something because, you know, even at this point, good drink alcohol content is regularly and it has to be labeled, I believe. So you can see Absolutely. Hey, this beer the percent. and beer, I'm probably going to only have one. <laughs> um, so I'm a little concerned that along the way, somewhere, we should have at least, you know, three levels of, hey, look out because this okay. is a concentrate or this is more than you're expecting ingesting, especially on edibles. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep, mm -hmm. it absolutely does. And I think that's an excellent point. Um, and it's captured here. So that may be, you know, the other piece. So now we're looking, and this is not a bad thing, but we're looking at symbols, statement, warning label, and then possibly on the warning label or another label dosage. I think those are all excellent points. I think it all speaks to safety. Uh, there's other things yeah. that I think about, like, you know, like, um, sourcing and where it comes from and, and what strain is this, but that's not in my wheelhouse or anyone here possibly. <laughs> um, but obviously that, that's a labeling question, but it doesn't speak to public safety like uh, dosage does. Understood. Ingrid, you wanted to add something? No, I just want to say I appreciate that comment because it's sort of um, help put into words what I'm struggling with here just sort of you know with alcohol we've grown to understand that you know you can many people can process so to speak one serving over the course of an hour without putting yourself or other people at risk you know and I don't feel like we have that I don't know the first thing about what how we metabolize cannabis and so it as a con if someone's a consumer and they're really trying to earnestly <laughs> do the right thing and not drive or operate motor, you know, equipment in an impaired state, how will people be able to gauge what is a responsible dose, so to speak? And even in that example you gave us from Amazon, it talked about impairment can occur two hours after consumption, which I didn't realize that, um, but. I could, I could imagine people in the best case scenario, let's say, consuming cannabis or however they're consuming it, and then two hours later being surprised that they're impaired. So how do we inform people? How do we let people know what is safe for them in the best case scenario? Um, you heard some of the packaging um, recommendations, and it might even be in the, in the act. I'd have to go back and look want to have a, uh, a notification about how long it takes to uh, to take effect you know if it's a if it's an edible does it you know does it take a half hour or does it take you know an hour and a half or two hours so that people at least have some way of engaging for themselves but of course the the uh, pr uh, one of the problems here is that there's no there isn't even any uh, agreement across the board what impairment looks like um, scientifically there's no breathalyzer uh, yet so it's a uh, it's it's tricky that's why that's why part of some of the uh, recommendations here when you get to the uh, to law enforcement and, and impaired driving uh, are requesting funds for um, uh, educating law enforcement about uh, you know with the Drug impaired, um, uh, mm -hmm. they call it the DRE and the A ride program. That, these are just these are more behavioral ways to, to try to figure out whether somebody's uh, impaired. Uh, impaired. Denika, so can I you, jump? Can I jump you, in for a second? I don't have a way of raising my sure. hand other than actually raising my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just to go back to Ingrid's question and just to kind of remind the group that, Will, you know, while you're talking about symbols and labels today, there's also a POS flyer that you'll be talking about in the future. So there's some yeah. companion information that will go with the information that you're talking about today that might actually better address Ingrid's concerns. You know what? I actually thought I was showing that, and I apparently am not. Give me one moment. Um, I think I stopped sharing my screen. I have that flyer up, Julie. Um, let me, let me 
share this. Is anybody seeing that? Because it shows that it's there, yeah. but it's not. Okay, great, great, great. I have that. That's the enacted language, and it's, it's definitely in here. At a minimum, the flyer shall contain, which that doesn't answer the question, but there is the educational element that would be um, available to people. Now, whether or not they read it, of course, is another story, but to give them the opportunity to have it, to see it, to be able to know those things, because that is definitely something that was enacted, developed by the board in consult consultation with the Department of Health. Um, it'll be posted, supplied um, to the retailer free of charge. So Julie, that sounds like the, the CCB will be printing and distributing those once it's developed. Yeah, if I'm well, reading them correctly. Be for Thank you. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, information, and it, it says the exact thing that you know you were you were concerned with also Ingrid but we'd have to answer what that is you know the the, the amount of time um, not driving health risk uh, problematic usage how to get help for cannabis abuse so I did want to put this um, back out here and that's in the um, PDF that um, I have for everyone so I, it may be helpful um, Gina I know you're on but in the medicinal um, if you are available in the medicinal um, yep. group, would we be able to get some of these answered, you know, by, by Dr. Clifton or at least the medicinal group has th that consensus on some of those things like how long it takes effect? And also, do we have anyone from the public, Julie, so that I can be mindful of that? We do. We have three members of the public. Okay, fantastic, because it, it's Ted Hill. So I would like to be cognizant of that um, and, and everyone's time. Um, so Gina, do you think that's something we could get from either Dr. Clifton or, or someone else, the um, effects and uh, how fast things can happen or how long they may take for um Yeah, for the they're also thinking about, you know, trying to get some educational materials put together for the public as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will, um, I can circle back with you on that and we'll get some additional information uh, for uh, for the subcommittee members for each of you and see how fast I can get that. But um, Julie, in, um, in keeping with time, do any of members of the public want to make any comments so we can be sure to uh, to address that? Do you both want to make comments? No. Okay. Yeah, we do have one member of the public who would like to make comments. Okay. Yeah, right up to the table. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Dave Silburn. I'm the uh, High Bailiff of Addison County and an attorney in Middlebury. Um, I, I want to urge you, uh, as you're writing uh, these proposals uh, for labels, uh, and especially when you get to the informative flyer, um, I want to encourage you to um, think about your goal and prioritize providing information to people who have already chosen to consume cannabis uh, as opposed to trying to scare people away from cannabis. Um, you're going to have a lot of cannabis novice consumers uh, coming into this market and uh, those consumers are going to gravitate towards edibles. Um, Especially, you know, we see this in other states where people who have shied away from cannabis in the unregulated market come back to it and come back to it through edibles. Um, and edibles present a very different type of risk uh, than smoking, uh, particularly in how long the effects take to come on and how long they last. Very different than when you smoke flour. Um, so. I, I, I just want to urge you to, you know, educate yourselves on that issue and focus your messaging on helping consumers consume responsibly and safely as opposed to trying to scare people away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, Anyone? it's a good point. I mean, we're talking about a product Absolutely. That, is, that is now legal. and uh, It's here. And uh, we're dealing with it, and we need to deal with that. 
Yeah, and it's, it is really important because, you know, if someone takes um, an edible, it can take up to two hours for them to feel the effects. And if they don't know that and they take more of the product, is where we run the issue into. I don't know if there's a video that's trying to say something that I didn't catch. Yeah, now the edibles is clearly the most challenging part of this whole thing. Um, but what we're looking at on the screen is the kin to a product insert type, right? Or that, mm -hmm. that you know, if you, a package insert, like if you will buy a Benadryl, uh, or if you got a prescription for something, that wasn't over the counter, this would be the package insert. So it has to have factual information that it's informing mm -hmm. the product. But in this case, it's for the non medicinal lottie, for the recreational lottie. Um, and so well, we may have certain package inserts that are appropriate for those who are buying it as a medicinal. These people are buying it for recreation. Um, a lot of the information will need to be the same, I agree, but um, it needs to be directed in a little different way. Not so much in using this specifically to treat something, using it for recreational use, like they would take a glass of wine. So we have to keep that in mind as we look at this one. Yeah, excellent point. I agree. I just want to throw out that you, of course, would not receive any kind of disclaimer or insert when you bought a beer or a glass of wine because there's so much uh, experience connected with a personal experience. Um, from a recreational standpoint, one of the odd have a thing on a level that is a responsibility protect people who aren't used that product. It's okay. Nuanced. Nuanced. Very. Very. Um, any additional comments from the public, Julie? Uh, I did not hear so. Okay. Excellent. So for for Thursday, but my goal would be by the end of today would be to give you some additional examples like we've discussed on here and also put that bank together i'll call it a bank of different disclaimer language that you can take a look at and um, give those to you and um and then what we can do is you can take a look at it is um come back on thursday and talk about this a little further and mark and i will take um, what those next steps also will look like for us as we start to nail some of more of this down. Is there anything additional that we haven't touched on that you might like to see? And if you don't know right now, you know, we'll, we'll you shoot us an email or, or anything and we be happy to, uh, to do that, get it for you. Well, one thing I'd be interested in trying to get under our belts is, uh, is, uh, do you know, in dealing with advice to uh, advertisers as well as advice to consumers and, and guidance to uh, yep. the, uh, the CCP staff and uh, reviewing and approving ads. I think the, the Deacon and I have uh, been looking at things uh, that we've found that found, uh, would be good guidance for uh, yep. in all those cases. And uh, if we can get that uh, you know, that under our belts, that would be great because I think uh, some of these things like the uh, health warning label that's supposed to go on ads, uh, the board is supposed to consult the, the Department of Health uh, as well. And so uh, I'll talk to, talk to Julie about, uh, you know, how to, how to uh, you know, leave enough time for that uh, review to take place. Mm -hmm. So in the interest of time, we're two minutes until the hour, and I know there's another subcommittee meeting afterwards. Is there anything additional anyone would like to add? Okay. Um, we'll get some additional information over, and then um, if anyone is open to, um, you know, a discussion, we can certainly, you know, have some one-offs here 
um, to make sure that we're representing, you know, all of the interests as well. Um, but I do believe this will start moving um, a little faster too as we get some of more of these items in your hands to take a look at. Any other thoughts? Mark, you wanna close us out? Um, sure. Okay. It, it, sure. We've covered it. The next one's coming on. Yeah, we'll. Uh, okay. You, you'll be receiving some new materials. Uh, yeah. Uh, during the week for the, Very the, the next meeting. So, um, but for, feel free to call Danica or me uh, if you have yep. uh, more questions or or uh, comments or good ideas or think some of this yep. stuff is bad ideas or. Uh, we're all ears. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Bye. Have a great day. Wait. Have yes. Time. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make one. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you.